All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Jen Abrahamian, and I have the pleasure of serving on the developer education team at a company called Twilio. And today I'm going to talk about how a technical solution ended up being the answer to a human problem that we had on our team. The integration of a very simple Slack webhook to our documentation platform helped change our priorities, our process, and a little bit about how we communicate with developers. So really briefly, I wanted to talk about who Twilio is and what we do. So Twilio's mission is to empower developers to build the future of communications. And how do we do that? Well, we have a series of powerful APIs from everything from voice to text messaging to real-time chat to video, account security and wireless IoT and more. And with this, we enable developers to bring communications into their apps so they can reach their customers in just the right way at just the right time. Behind those APIs, we have something called the super network, which is a layer of software that connects and optimizes global communications networks so that your messages are reliably delivered anywhere to anyone. So basically, we're a giant global communications platform. And now I'd like for you to meet the developer education team, which is the team I work on. So we're a team of engineers that are customer facing. We're part of developer relations at Twilio. Our main charge is to prioritize documentation and developer training at Twilio. So why is documentation part of DevRel? Well, it's because it's one of the front lines on which we get to engage with our customers. And it's one of the very first touch points that most developers have with Twilio. So if you're looking on Google for how to send an SMS with Python, for example, or if you're doing a Stack Overflow question on how to do masked phone numbers for anonymous call pairing, you're gonna land on a documentation page first. That's gonna happen before a sales call. It's gonna happen probably before you even see any of our marketing materials. So it's really, really critical that our docs are great. So our team's priority is to constantly raise the quality bar and make sure that we can get people up to building what they need to build as frictionless as possible. So a couple of things you should know about this team. One is that we're a team of engineers and so we love to find solutions in code whenever we can. The second thing is that our team is fully remote. So we actually live on Slack all day, every day. It's our primary means of communicating both with each other and with other people at Twilio. And the third thing to know about our team is that our core mission is to win over developer hearts and minds. Which brings us to the core question of today, why do we care about developer feedback on documentation? Well, that hearts and minds thing is really at the center of it because this is our key way to know whether we're doing that. And whether or not we've won developer hearts and minds is a tough metric to quantify. Another kind of challenging thing that we face is that Twilio has over 2,000 individual pages of documentation. And that's a lot to maintain even with a dedicated team. So feedback is one of the ways that we have an angle to learn where we can improve. It also helps us know where we can pay the most attention for our next steps going forward with our roadmap. So at Twilio, our team is really concerned with all feedback, but especially negative feedback. And this is one of my favorite gifs. As Leslie Nope says, what I hear when I'm being yelled at is people caring really loudly at me. So when we're engaging with our detractors, we actually have the opportunity to learn where we can affect them the most. Again, that's those hearts and minds. So for a while, our team wasn't even collecting feedback on our documentation. Uh, we were just kind of flying by the seat of our pants, hoping that you know, our reputation would uphold us and we were gonna be great. But then back in October, we decided to actually do something about this and start collecting feedback. So we instituted what we call the five-star widget. It works in a pretty straightforward manner. It lives at the top of every single page of documentation that Twilio has, and developers who reach these pages can hover over this five-star widget and leave us a rating from one to five. They're also prompted to leave a comment optionally. These ratings then get stored to a table in our documentation platform database, uh, and they get piped into a dashboard that we look at during our weekly meetings. So as soon as we implemented this, we were like, great, we know how we're doing. We have some progress and some insights. But we're a really self-critical team, and I think we'd probably give this implementation only a three out of five stars. And let's talk about why. So the first is that aggregate ratings only go so far. We've got over 2,000 pages of documentation, and knowing that we have, for example, a 3.75 across all of those pages doesn't really give us everything we need to know. It doesn't tell us where we're doing well. It doesn't tell us where we're doing poorly and can improve. 
And it's really just a rolled up number that might sound nice to management. The second is we're really deviating with one of our core missions as customer facing developers. And we're not engaging with developers if we're just looking at them as aggregate rolled up numbers. And of course, numbers alone aren't a direct pathway to actionable work. So if we see a page has a one rating, that's great. We know that it could use some improvement. But what does that one mean? How do we know what we can do to make it better? Uh, as engineers, we want to optimize for the most efficient way to improve our documentation. So if we're seeing like, oh, this page is getting a bunch of ones and we don't know why, we're going to cut a ticket to investigate that. But that takes a lot of time, and it's not the most effective. This is where we decided to look at something that was right in front of us every single day, Slack. Uh, and we introduced a webhook that we've lovingly called Feedback Bot. Basically, when a piece of feedback comes in, uh, on the save method for that piece of feedback, we call a method called Notify Slack, which really just makes a simple call to the Slack website, the webhook that we created. Then the feedback gets piped into a channel uh, that is read not only by our documentation team, but by product owners and stakeholders all across Twilio. I've taken a look. It's lurked in by over 200 people. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the implementation because this is one of the things that was so magical for us. This took less than 20 lines of code to uh, implement, and that includes our error handling and tests. The notify Slack method is just called on our save, and it's really, really easy. Um, it happens in with like a completely performant way, so it was a complete breeze to implement. We were also up and running in less than an hour, which is really, really wonderful for us. Uh, by the time we cut the ticket uh, to the time that we were deployed and seeing these feedback messages pipe through into our channel, less than one hour. So a little bit of docs feedback from the team at Twilio to the team at Slack. You guys killed it on this tutorial. So what changed on our team? Well, we went from looking at things like this, aggregate rolled up numbers with maybe a little bit of week over week trending to something a little bit more meaningful. Previously, when we were looking at ratings like this, we would say, what can we do to do better? Are our docs even this good? And we didn't really have answers to these questions. Once we moved towards the more actionable uh, stream of feedback, we were able to take a look and say, hey, I can see comments coming through. I know exactly how developers feel about this. I know what kinds of pages they're looking at, maybe some patterns, uh, and I can see exactly where their pain points lie. And this is where we get to tell some fun stories. So there's all kinds of different feedback that comes in on the documentation, and it's really, really great to know exactly where we can help serve developers better. So for example, uh, on one of our authentication tutorials. We didn't offer a, a solution for Python and Django, just Flask. And we were missing an entire community of developers. So as soon as that piece of feedback came in, our team took a look at it, we had a conversation, and we decided, hey, let's port this tutorial for Django so that we can serve additional people. We then sent a quick email to the person who requested that tutorial, and we're like, hey, here's the link for you. And they responded with delight, because they were able to get to the business case much faster. We also get some feedback sometimes that maybe our code is a little bit outdated. That's a thing that happens when you have over 2,000 pages of documentation. It's really hard to keep those code samples fresh. Uh, and this helps us find those on the spot exactly when it's frustrating a developer. So they don't have to log a support ticket, they can talk directly to us. Then we can help solve their problem immediately, craft better documentation for them, and get them to where they need to go. Sometimes we also learn about developers' learning styles. We realize where we could use a video tutorial or maybe some diagrams. And this helps us ultimately connect better with people. So one of our other goals that we had was engaging more deeply with the team at Twilio and getting them to engage more deeply with developers. So one of the ways this happened is by putting that low feedback directly in front of the team in that Slack channel. Product stakeholders get to see these things live. They don't have to wait for a report or with a meeting with our team. They can just find us right away and say, hey, I saw someone had some feedback on our Authy docs. What can we do to help make them better? 
We're also seeing a higher sense of urgency and more ask actionable tasks that come out of this. So essentially what's happening is when someone says, hey, you have a typo on that page, or this method is deprecated, are you sure you still wanna talk about it? Uh, we can go and cut a ticket immediately, and within a couple hours, something is completely solved. This is so much faster than before when we would do quarterly or, or even less than quarterly reviews of the documentation and, and touch every single doc. Now we can touch them as it makes sense. We're also deepening our integrations with Slack and, and starting to use more of the feature set. Uh, one of the things that we started doing as a team collectively is using React as shorthand. So if we want to do an email follow-up with someone, which is one of the great things that we have a chance to do, we can just type a little uh, email icon on the thing and we know that that piece of feedback has been handled with a, a more high-touch response. We can also use threads to talk about patterns that we're seeing or questions that we have. So for example, when some of our C-sharp documentation recently was getting a lot of feedback in the lower ranges, we can say, hey, is there something out of date with packages? Maybe let's take a look at that, because it's happening. So what happened for our team? Well, our priorities have truly shifted. Um, we feel like we're significantly more user focused. We have a stronger sense of empathy with developers and we've gotten the opportunity to connect much more deeply and much more frequently with them. And of course, this wouldn't be a metrics talk without mentioning that our quality ratings have overall gone up. We're starting to see a steady uptick and we think it's because we're able to act more immediately and more urgently about these. By having the feedback directly in front of us, we're able to prioritize things and take action absolutely quickly. But most importantly, especially for a team that's most concerned with developer hearts and minds, we've noticed that feedback isn't just a number, it's a collection of stories. And those stories help us get better as a team. So where do we go from here? Uh, so the very first thing we want to do is hone our process of connecting with developers. Right now it's a little bit ad hoc where we'll do some email follow-ups if we feel the need or if a comment warrants it. And we've sort of positioned ourselves as like a pre-support vector. Well, we can do better. We're a developer relations team after all. We also want to continue to craft a culture of empathy among the team. This is something that we've been working on building and we think it's really, really critical, especially since our mission, of course, is to have developers' hearts and minds at the top of our mind. And of course, more Slack integrations. There's so many more ways that we could be using Slack, and we're really excited about it. Ch shared channels is one of the ways that we're looking to explore, and we also would like to empower product owners by making a bot where they can craft, uh, they can type in their product name and get an immediate aggregate rating. All right, so next I'd like to invite you to talk about documentation with us. We've got a lot of lessons learned from this, so please don't be shy about reaching out to the team at Twilio. You can reach us at docs at twilio.com, or of course, you can leave feedback on one of our docs pages. I guarantee we're going to see it. Thank you so much. <laughs> I think you can open it up for Q&A if you want. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mike, actually, I think this is fascinating. One of the questions I have that I think a lot of documentation teams might have is, so now you kind of have, you need Slack time mm -hmm. to go and address this and make it a priority. So how do you balance that with the standard, we need to either um, go address all the product releases that are being launched, we need to go and update the samples that are there, produce new ones that we've identified through um, other forms of feedback that we need to go address. Like, how do you make sure that this becomes a priority and not just a time sink? Because I think those are two very different things. Absolutely, so the question is how do we prioritize addressing this feedback among the other competing priorities we have and not make it a time sink? Uh, that's a great question. So there's a system that we've developed that we call the flanking system. Uh, essentially, it's on an off rotation with our pager duty where one person on the team or one point and focus on the feedback that comes in. They're the one that primarily engages with the React G and will say like, I've marked this as red, uh, I've engaged with this person by email, I've passed this off to the product team, et cetera. Uh, and so usually like that one person will sort of own feedback for that week uh, so that everyone else can focus on the tasks that they've already got in the roadmap. Mm -hmm. Great question.
Anything else I can share about our documentation team's processes or how the Slack bot's been very useful for us? Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much.